Appreciate your help, as always. All right. All right, so we're back in public session. We're just getting out of uh, non-public. Um, it is uh, 7.04 p.m. and welcome to the Milford School Board agenda. Before going any further, I'd like to see if we can get a motion to uh, seal the non-public uh, minute notes. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Carvel. A second. Second. By Mr. Batuli. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Three ayes. Um, and just for the record, uh, uh, Mrs. Zeno and Mrs. Tlapa were not present uh, at non-public uh, this evening. So the motion passes three to zero. Uh, just uh, for introductions, uh, board member, Mr. Vitulli to my left, uh, Vice Chair Holly Talapa, to my right, Mr. Carvel, Superintendent Jessica Hunzinga, and Jane Forson. How are you tonight? Good, how are you? Great, and I'm Mr. Hannon, uh, School Board Chair. So welcome everybody to, uh, hopefully uh, we're doing well. I like just to uh, make a motion to um, regards to doo -doo 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 -doo. excuse me just for a second. Uh, make a motion uh, to suspend policy twenty one fifty one school board's use of cell phones for remainder of the meeting. So moved by Mr. Carvel. Second by Mr. Oh, well, second by you. I made the motion, right? So, oh, you did. Okay. Yep. Second by Mr. Turbo. Sure. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Four to zero. And that passes. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right. So, first on the uh, agenda is we have a motion to uh, uh, for the consent agenda. I so, motion. Um, Mr. Chairman, I would move that we remove uh, item A and make a motion to remove item A from the consent agenda as none of those are in front of the board okay. tonight. Okay. Motion by Mr. Carvel to remove uh, item A, approval of non-public minutes as we have not received all the uh, 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 minute uh, notes. Do I have a second? By Ms. Talapa, discussion? All in favor? Aye. That passes four to zero. Thank you, Mr. Carvel. I also would like to, uh, uh, in regards to the approval of the, oh, they're not on there. So never mind. I have no motion. Oh yes, October nineteenth uh, 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 minute notes uh, states that uh, Mr. Ann stated that the board school board is a non-public session, which began at six p.m. and the meeting would be continued at, after the conclusion of public session. He said at that point, the non-public minutes would be sealed. Um, I just want to make it proper that we made a motion to have them sealed. And I don't know who made uh, the actual motion who seconded it. Does anybody remember? Um, I do. And I apologize, Judy's not here today. She wouldn't normally have that note, so. Uh, the last meeting? Yeah. I think Ron made it. Did you second that? Yeah, it was just last meeting, uh, October, October 19th meeting. So should we okay. should we move the minutes to another meeting just to verify with Judy? Okay, let's do that, okay? Because there's just a couple of things on there. So um, do I have a motion to uh, for uh, B, approval of minutes, October 19th, 2020, motion? I motion to move it to the next meeting. Motion made by Mr. Fatuli to move to the next meeting to be reviewed by Mrs. Zeno. Do I have a second? Second. By Mr. Carvel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Passes four to zero. We'll move that to next meeting also. I would make a motion to uh, approve the remaining items on the consent agenda, item C and D for approval. Motion made by Mr. Carvel. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Slop. Any discussion? All in favor? 
which passes four to zero. Thank you very much. And then we'll move on to public comments. And I just want to remind everybody, we have 15 minutes under uh, public comments. Please keep to three minutes and to any agenda items. All right, let me look on, nice and I came prepared here this time. Participants. Uh, Mr. Wood, how are you tonight? Good, Mr. Hannon, how are you? Good, sir. Could you just name Rick, your name? Yep. Rich, Richard Wood. Graduate. I'm sorry, Richard Wood Homestead Circle, 70 Homestead. Um, just a quick question. I'm kind of curious. Uh, the board just voted to uh, rescind for the evening the cell phone policy, and I'm wondering what the explanation is for that. The explanation is that I'll be using my cell phone for Zoom and uh, to review that. So that's the explanation. So there's a, so everybody knows that. So I have my phone up. Okay, thank you. Yep, very good, good question. Uh, Mr. Doty, Jennifer Doty. Yes, um, good evening. Um, I just wanted to um, speak briefly to the, uh, the plans that you might be discussing tonight about uh, going full remote. And I just, just wanted to uh, let you know that sure within the- uh, Mr. Doty, I'm sorry, I, I apologize. Uh, just your name and address, I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Jennifer Erdoti, 14 Johnson Street in Milford. Thank you. Sure. Um, I just wanted to make you aware of the situation for the music classes if we do go fully remote, that um, due to latency issues on Zoom and Google Meet, there's actually no way for music classes to meet as ensembles. So this would be for the middle school band and chorus, the high school band and chorus, and the high school guitar class. Um, and if we were going to be going remote, uh, as soon as two weeks from now, it would require a kind of a complete 180 in our curriculum and our lesson plans. Um, and I, you may have seen virtual choirs that people think those are recorded right on Zoom, but they're not. Each one is filmed, each video is filmed, and then a technician painstakingly puts them together and does effects. Um, so I just wanted to keep you to keep that in mind. And also as a teacher say that I've made some great contacts and um, relationships with my students this fall, and I would hate to have those be set back. I got a couple kids that are just barely starting to open up um, and they're tough nuts to crack, but I'm getting them and I would hate to lose that at this time. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your input. Okay, so no more uh, from the crowd and from Zoom. So we're gonna move on to uh, leave public comments and then we're going to go to board member comments. Any board member comments tonight? No? Okay. Now we're going to go right to reports and presentations. Any reports and presentations? Yep, nope. Okay, then we're going to go right to new business, how they travel and educational model. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to share my screen on Zoom um, to begin the discussion tonight for everyone. Slow your volume, someone's volume is up. I know it's mine, so hold on. Oh, I do too. Yes. <laughs> I think that's better, is that better? Yep. And everyone can, Perfect. can see the screen. Excellent. All right. So this evening's discussion, uh, we wanted to bring before the board. Uh, we have a couple weeks ago, uh, we sent some information to the board, sort of preempting this discussion tonight with some data. And last week uh, in my superintendent's report, I also began to discuss some of the uh, decisions that we need to make regarding the holiday season and our school district model. So tonight we're really going to frame our brief presentation around three questions. Uh, one is what are the challenges that we're having right now uh, and uh, challenges that we anticipate through the holidays? What are some of the reasons for these challenges? And then what is the leadership team's recommendation for prior to the December holiday and then after the December holiday. And um, we wanted to get the board's input and seek the board's support tonight uh, to make a determination uh, for what that model might look at uh, between the end of Thanksgiving or after Thanksgiving break to Martin Luther King. So 
We've taken on many concerns and considerations as a leadership team. The largest consideration um, and probably most significant consideration is the ongoing classroom staffing challenges. Uh, we have had a significant um, shortage of substitutes and we've had uh, increasing demands for coverage to keep the schools operational and conduct an in-person model. So just some uh, important data to for the public to be aware of, for the board to be aware of, is that uh, of the 200 plus total professional staff that we have, and this is just professional staff, 25% or around 51 individuals have been approved for an alternative working assignment. And this doesn't include classified staff and paraprofessionals who are also receiving accommodations. And um, I also just wanna make note is that as a district, we have gone above and beyond our legal obligation to provide accommodations to staff who have sought those accommodations during this pandemic. So these accommodations include staff working remotely uh, or live streaming into classrooms. So some staff are working from home and they're live streaming into classrooms, but that requires additional staffing and additional coverage to um, oversee and supervise those classrooms. We also have some staff who have received FECRA accommodations and they may be working on site three days uh, and receiving FECRA benefit on the alternate two days of the week that they're not on site or uh, working due to childcare needs. We have staff on FMLA leave and staff who have received school board approved leave of absences. So all of this uh, has put an increasing demand um, and, and given us quite a bit of a shortage on a day-to-day -day basis as we're running and operating uh, our schools. We also have vacant positions uh, that we've been unable to fill for several weeks. And I also provided you that data in your board memo. And the interesting thing, and I think, you know, Mr. Jody, or Jody talked about in her public comment, uh, you know, how it's really been working for music classes. Um, but what we're finding is that these impacts have had various um, degrees depending on the school and the level, right? So the, the impact of the, the staffing shortages isn't across the board. Uh, we're seeing it uh, in specific schools, not so much district wide. So that is a consideration that I just want the board to take note of tonight as we're having this discussion, uh, because that may lead us uh, to uh, different decisions. So in addition to the staffing challenges that I just described in terms of you know, ADA, FMLA, FECRA accommodations, um, just the substitute shortage, uh, we also have the basic daily sicknesses, right? So when uh, a staff member becomes sick or their family becomes sick, um, that also stresses our staffing uh, ability and the substitute shortage uh, has not been helping that. We also have had um, quarantine due to illness or close contact with some of our COVID cases. And so we've had employee absences due to COVID symptoms, uh, even the actual virus or identified as a close contact. And these quarantines last anywhere from up to 14 to 24 days. So they can be um, close to a month long, these quarantines, depending on the scenario or situation. Also, um, upcoming uh, stressors on the staffing situation is going to be closures of surrounding districts. And we've already begun to hear of some districts that have decided to close after the Christmas holiday, districts who are already starting those discussions about possible closure after the Christmas holiday. And we have some staff whose uh, districts where they reside and live their children are needing to go remote after Thanksgiving, and that is requiring them to then request accommodations for FECRA um, under childcare. So those are challenges. And in addition, with the holidays coming up, we put out surveys to the staff and we have asked them about their intent to travel. And as you know, there are quarantining requirements. The governor has now, uh, as of last Friday, said that um, if you do travel out of state, you'll need to quarantine for one week and can return after that week with a negative test. Um, otherwise, you would need to quarantine for the full uh, 14 days. So, um, what's, but, the, what's the difference between the seven and 14? So the difference is, is with a negative result test. So you, you go away, mm -hmm. um, you have to quarantine for a week, get a test. And if you have a negative test result, you can come back okay. after the seven right, day you. quarantine. 
Um, but interestingly enough, what we are, we're hearing is that they're so inundated with tests that um, the reality is, is it's probably going to be longer than seven days okay. um, between, you know, getting in for the test and then um, the tests are rapid results. So they're getting them pretty quickly, but it's just a matter of the uh, access to the test. Um, so we do know that we have staff that are going to be traveling for the holidays. Um, not, not as much at Thanksgiving, but certainly we are seeing staff um, relaying to us the intent to travel uh, for the uh, December holiday. So this uh, has really become a concern in particular for um, a couple of our school buildings. But one thing that the principals uh, all agreed upon, and I, I do think that this is important, that the challenge that the increasing numbers of students who are gonna be expected to quarantine because families are traveling. Um, so when families travel, they also will need to quarantine. Um, and all of these other challenges really does impact uh, consistency for instruction. And so that was probably uh, you know, the, the biggest uh, argument is that you know, we looked at every single angle we could possibly consider. We talked about, you know, um, what are all the different models and options? Could we utilize our staff in very unique and innovative ways? Um, you know, take support staff that we might have, utilize paraprofessionals um, to keep the buildings open. The biggest concern relayed by the principals was, uh, could we truly maintain high quality and consistency by piecemealing and patchworking coverage? And so that is a, a question that um, I think does warrant discussion uh, because we want to have high quality. And one thing that we would be able to do uh, in a remote model versus um, continuing in this hybrid model is uh, collapsing the A and B days and having consistent direct instruction uh, four days a week. Um, which is uh, more the, at the secondary level than they're currently getting in terms of direct instruction. Right now we have our A, B days. And so they would be able to get, you know, at least four days of direct instruction uh, versus the two days that right. they're getting live with a teacher. And there would be more consistency. So I, I thought that that was a really important point that uh, the administrative team wanted to relay. So... The teachers and staff, if we were going to go to a remote model from uh, November 30th to January 18th, and we've discussed two different options, right? We discussed, you know, following the, the, the December holiday, um, moving remote. Um, another piece of data that I think is important is that uh, a survey was put out by the New Hampshire School Administrators Association, and of the 50 districts that did respond, 78% uh, are maintaining their current model um, as long as they can keep it. Uh, the rest of the districts are going to be going remote at some point during the holiday season. Um, as you know, many of the districts around us are doing it after Christmas break. Um, we don't know the level or degree to which they have the same staffing challenges that we do, um, but uh, many districts are, are making various different decisions, but that's the percentage of the respondents that we received from the New Hampshire uh, Association of School Administrators. So if we were to go remote uh, from November 30th to January 18th, uh, we would expect teachers and staff to remain on campus while providing remote instruction. Um, that way they would have access to the technology resources and support on campus. We would also be running our IDD programs and uh, Project Drive uh, live in person. Our most critical needs students we would be having on campus. Uh, we would also utilize our Wednesdays as a means for uh, students who are in need of additional help could come into the buildings and uh, receive that additional in-person help, as well as um, students who are in need of any type of other social and emotional wraparound services. So we will maintain those critical populations on campus. And as I said just a moment ago, 
uh, we would be able to increase daily instruction um, and access to live instruction. It would just simply be remote versus in person uh, because we would be combining A and B days. Uh, AM and PM groups would be provided live instruction four days a week, uh, and we would really try to personalize support on those uh, when Wednesdays. School nurses are going to continue to implement attendance tracking and COVID monitoring. Uh, educators are going to use the pre-holiday early release for planning and preparations for the model change. That early release uh, will take place November 18th, which is this Wednesday, um, and December 16th uh, to do the planning and preparations for both um, holiday sort of breaks or remote instruction uh, periods of time. And um, so it's hard, right? Because as we heard from Mr. Doty, when it comes to certain populations, uh, certain uh, classes, such as our ATC classes, that's also a concern. Um, our music classes, you know, going fully remote, uh, that does impact the quality and even access and ability for some students to be able to receive that uh, direct instruction online. And um, so there's a lot to be considered. Uh, we talked about um, even the idea of making a case by case consideration. So, you know, for some schools whose staffing challenges are much more um, prevalent, uh, maybe those schools being remote and other schools whose staffing challenges are not, but that creates inconsistencies for families. Um, so that was a consideration uh, because, you know, the high school is not um, at such a critical point in terms of staffing um, and most likely could remain open till December. Uh, but then one of the things we discussed is that families may rely on those older students to uh, be there for younger children who are, you know, mm -hmm. family members and who need support in their own, um, you know, remote learning at home. So many, many different considerations uh, that we've we discussed. And so I'd like to hear some of your questions, thoughts, uh, ideas. Okay, so we'll open up to the uh, board to for any comments, questions. Um, Dr. Zanga, yes, I, I just had a question on, my first question is, so it sounds like staffing is an issue. So I'm just wondering, um, early on, your level of community transmission matrix had three components, transmission within the school facility, student ab absenteeism due to illness, and staff capacity. So it sounds like right now staff capacity, if it had to be ranked, like have, have we ranked it, would you say that's a high or medium? It, it really depends on the building. Um, so it's not across the district, it's really at a building by building um, circumstance. So which buildings in order, like which would be the worst scenario? So I think Heron Pond uh, right now, due to some unexpected leaves of absences that have come just due to family circumstances or personal circumstances, um, Heron Pond would probably uh, be leading the way in terms of uh, just staffing challenges. Um, could we uh, move staff into other positions to cover those classes? Absolutely, it, we could put a body there. But what we want to make sure is, is that we're putting um, a person there that can provide high quality instruction in that particular content area. So Heron Palm would probably be um, first on the list in terms of staffing concerns. Uh, the middle school probably second, um, but they're kind of neck and neck. If we were, you know, running the hundred yard dash, they're, they're pretty close together. Um, I think, you know, JMS and the high school are in a better position in terms of staffing. And sort of in tandem with that, I have a two part question. Um, so you mentioned that a lot of the teachers, their issues are that if they're where they live, if their towns go remote, their kids will be home. So I'm assuming when you said that, that they're going to want to be teaching remotely from home. So they're in the house with the children. But if we're going to mandate that they're all on site, I, I don't know, is that like, will there be an ability for those teachers whose students are home to, to if, so you're talking full live remote? Yes. The schools that end up going? Yes. So, so how would you, I guess, how would you address that? Because I, I would hate to see that we go remote and then we still have staffing issues. The same way that uh, we addressed it when Heron Pond went 
uh, live remote or went remote. Um, we did make specific accommodations for those staff members whose students were home. So for example, we have some staff members at Heron Pond um, that have students at Heron Pond. And so we did make certain accommodations for those staff to be home with their students and teach from home. Um, and the rest of the staff came in and taught from the school. Okay. So it sounds like if they're in that situation, that there, there would be accommodations made to accommodate, to, to address those yes. needs. Okay. And um, so you're talking full live remote, like they'll actually, the teachers will be starting the day and doing similar to what took place during that two week Karen Pond. Yes. Okay. Yep. Could you possibly consider, and I don't know if you could, but if there are certain classes at MMS, like say that Heron Pond and MMS did ultimately have to go remote, could you let those certain classes that require on-site attendance, like maybe to hold those classes in this building, for for example, the ensemble music, or you know, it sounds like the high school isn't an issue anyways right now. No, uh, in speaking with the principal today, uh, the feeling was is that the high school um, could go to December um, and 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 make it through without the, the, the critical staffing you know challenges that we're having at the other two. Uh, we did not talk about certain classes and programs coming in live because um, it would serve a transportation challenge. Uh, to, you know, unless parents were going to commit to taking their kids in for that specific class and then transporting them home, transportation would be a challenge at the middle school. Um, and even at the high school, if we were going to say, like, for example, in a four block school day, and you have music second block, um, you wouldn't come into school for first block, third block or fourth block, you'd be coming into school only for second block. And so it would be very, very challenging. We, we couldn't run bus routes like that. Jane. What's that? We couldn't run bus routes like that. I can't. So, so the middle school and the high school take the same bus. So if those students were willing to come in just for those special classes, I mean, would that be a possibility or no? I don't believe it would work because the bus routes are in the morning, right? 7.30, the kids get dropped off and then the kids get picked up at, you know, the end of the school day. So when those kids come in, it's not like they would go to their four period class day live and the teachers would be teaching live stream in front of some students and then out to other students because that would be room and Zoom and we've had that discussion that that won't work. Um, but if they came in for one block, they would be responsible to come in with their own transportation. We couldn't have, we would have to redo all of the different bus routes um, that just couldn't be done. How many students are in the um, music department that that might impact. I mean, it might be worth sending out a survey to those parents and seeing if, if, if ultimately MMS does have to go remote, it would be great to be able to keep the consistency for on-site for those students that require it. That would have to be um, something that we looked into. I, I think that it would be very, very challenging um, to have those classes live simply because of the transportation and the principals. They're they're with us on Zoom, um, so that they so if they want to jump in and and share some of the thoughts, that transportation is just the first thing that I thought that could really prohibit that from happening. Do you know how many kids are in that program? Off the top of my head, because I I don't. Um, Bill Demers might and Chaley might. Stop sharing. Oh, I can stop sharing. Unless you have anything else, so that other people can see the program. Hi, I can speak to that. Um, I would just be concerned in terms of accommodating. Um, this is Chaley Davis, principal of the high school. Do you want me to respond to Holly's question about Please. music classes? Please. Thank you. Yeah, so right now our music room is pretty maxed out. We don't have a big music room and we don't have um, a, an ability to fit a lot of kids in there. Um, right now because once the kids practice they have to clear out and allow after 30 minutes of an air exchange right now they go to a separate classroom and do the air exchange and then go back in i don't know how we could accommodate additional music students from the middle school within our current facility and still be able to do that safely 
that room is used throughout the day. Thank you very much. Yep. Other questions? So where, where we stand, as far as I know the presentation, um, or the main recommendations, I say, you know, I know we, we saw, uh, you know, you gave us some, you know, some options, so to speak, to speak to, I, I think we all understand the challenges, you know, on both sides, you know, as you, you put them out. So thank you on that. Um, so I, I think the, the leadership team uh, feels very strongly that, you know, especially due to some of the decisions in the surrounding districts uh, from Christmas to Martin Luther King, that two week period, uh, we should go remote and provide live, live instruction. Uh, I just want to make sure and hear from the board in terms of your thoughts and your perspective, um, the remote period from Thanksgiving to Christmas, I wanna make sure that you had all your questions answered. Uh, we've raised all of the um, you know, challenges that could come up. One of the, the benefits, right? We've, we talked a lot as a leadership team in terms of pros and cons. One of the pros of making the decision to go remote between um, Thanksgiving and Christmas is it gives you know teachers time to plan for uh, it gives principals and administrators time to plan uh, to make a really high quality five weeks of remote instruction. Okay, so that's a pro, and it allows for consistency. It allows for more direct instruction from teachers um, to students. Like I said, four days a week compared to right now two days of live instruction. The con of that is, and I just think it's an important thing to raise, is that this does have an impact on families. Uh, families who uh, you know, need for their kids to come to school. Um, I'm not saying that we're a childcare you know, facility, but we do provide childcare to families. And it does put a significant burden on families if their children are unable to attend at their school um, for, for however, you know, much time it's during the same the on the other side too, too right 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 so i just think that you know that that challenge for families is something that needs to be put out there and raised and considered by the board um but again that's that's a con to the situation but there's many pros right um to having a remote model as well mr vitulli yes uh the child care like you were saying, if some of the towns are on remote before we are and stuff, but you said teachers can teach remotely from home if that situation is the issue. Teachers, but there's families also, parents um, who, you know, some of them are both working outside of the house. Um, we did discuss as a leadership team, um, giving parents enough notice mm -hmm. Um, and time to be able to uh, put together some form of childcare uh, would be more beneficial versus taking the period from Thanksgiving break to Christmas and saying, all right, we're gonna do our very, very best to keep the schools open and keep operating as we are. However, just know that it could turn on a dime and we maybe have to close the school because of staffing challenges. Um, that puts parents in a much more difficult situation because the next day they may have to pivot and need to have child care for the next couple of weeks, if that makes sense. So, I mean, that's sort of the- Well, the, and I would also think that that also offers a unique challenge to the teachers, you know, if they had to change, you know, their instruction on the dime too, because not all teachers are set up to and or prepared to teach remotely at this time. It takes, I would take, I would think it, I'm not a teacher, but I would just think that it takes some time and maybe some instruction or a meeting to help them along with that piece too. Right. Um, we, I'm from a challenge standpoint, I know Mr. Fatuli, you know, teaches uh, remotely, and it offers a unique challenge. Right. You know, uh, so I mean, those have to come into consideration too. I right. would think, right? Because I think they're strained. Yeah. The teachers are strained enough. Yeah. You know, doing hybrid and remote and. You know, I'm getting kind of concerned, and I know you are too, with the strain the teachers are being put on. So, I mean, it's just from a board standpoint, you know, we have to, that has to be a, a, 
a big factor in decision as far as what we do, because you know, I don't think these teachers can continue to have this type of strain. And yep. I, I know that they're doing so good. Too. Yeah, they are. They're doing an excellent job. And I, I think that the challenge is, right, the, the biggest pro of going remote for the five-week period is really quality and consistency. Um, you know, over that period of time and not being in a situation where, for example, if we do have not like a significant COVID spike or, you know, because that's another consideration, we are seeing a spike in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, and so not the, the COVID um, health concern isn't as much an issue for us right now as much as staffing. I'm not saying it isn't at all. What I'm saying is, is that the COVID health concern is not to the level, the same level um, in terms of operating our building right now as the staffing is. Um, but that health issue is also a concern and being remote for that period of time um, is also another pro to, you know, keeping any type of spread. And also with families going uh, away and, and, and um, leaving the state or traveling, that's going to require quarantining for kids. And that also means interrupted learning for those students as well. So um, those are just all really important considerations uh, for the board. Have we surveyed the staff to find out like where, they're, where the majority of their mindset is that in terms of the possibility of remote Thanksgiving through MLK or Christmas through MLK, or can we survey the staff as well? We have surveyed the staff in terms of their traveling um, plans. Well, I'm not talking about traveling. Right. I'm talking about would it be, would they prefer to go remote for the five weeks so we can get that solid? I mean, hybrid in theory was a, seemed like a good idea, but when you really look at the hybrid model, you know, at the elementary level, we have all the kids in the school on the same day, even though they're not there at the same time. We can't really guarantee the disinfecting. And then for the, the model that, you know, is implemented at the high school and middle school level, you know, there's every other day. So, and then the kids that don't have daycare are going to the Boys and Girls Club or going elsewhere. So in many ways, if we could have fit them all in the school, you know, being on site would be less potentially problematic, but that's not an option. So it seems like if, you know, according to the matrix that you originally put in place, and I think it's important to incorporate that into this decision as well. There were those three components, transmission within the school facility, student absenteeism due to illness, and staff capacity to conduct those classes. So I think it's great that we're discussing this part, but I think if we look at the data too, and get feedback from the teachers. I mean, back to staffing. We want to make sure that everyone has the ability to do their job. And it's, it's, it's a terrible situation either way. I think the only redeeming thing is that, you know, they'll have a vaccine soon and. Right, so, so based on the criteria, the three things that you just read, um, only one of those is an issue right now. Uh, we've Just not had transmission across the schools. Um, our attendance rates uh, are not at a level um, that would make that um, an issue uh, at this point. And st but staffing is. So, um, Mr. Carvel, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, it's it's a very difficult situation, and uh, and let me first say that I am not a big fan of remote teaching. Um, I, I want to get all of our kids in there, but as the data you just presented to us, I guess it, it, when I'm trying, and, and I apologize if I'm confused because it, it is a lot. And I, I'm sorry for everybody that has to go through this daily um, because it is confusing. But I guess from my standpoint is one, you said a couple key points in your presentation is, you know, the best model uh, for education for the kids is is the delivery of education and giving the teachers time to plan for this span from the 30th to December 18th and and I fall back on the same thing is is what's best for kids and students and education our staff and putting all those in a priority and it sounds like what we're doing at least is scrambling day to day I see these emails I see, you know, tracing and, and everybody jumping and everybody stressed out. And, and, and I'm just a board member that gets the information. I don't know how the other board members, but I'm stressed over getting it every day. This field that's in front of us is stressed every day. Our students have got to be stressed, our parents and families. So 
you know, as much as I hate to say it, but I, I really think that we probably should have a better proactive approach and get ready for this thing that's spreading all over New Hampshire. We're seeing the numbers. I'll agree, I agree with Holly that it's statistics, it's combinations, it's, it's all of the data that we didn't have when the board decided hybrid is now here. And I think we're seeing problems in operations of the school and education and delivery of the education and getting quality is what every one of the people in this room is about quality of education and safety. And, and I think that's where we are. I think, I think we're, we're going to have to make hard decisions. I know that we love to survey, but I'm not, I'm not interested in the survey results. I see this, I see the statistics. I see the faces on many people in town of teachers. I see the kids. I think we have a problem. I think we're seeing rises, we're shutting down buildings, we're making parents scramble. And I think if, if, if it was on my shoulders right now tonight, which I think it is, I'd like to see us go into this remote lockdown, have a good holiday, take a break, give the teachers a break to plan for this, get a good model for this, this remote period, have everybody be safe, lock ourselves down, and God forbid we have to continue with being on there, but have plans to return back to school and get our kids safely back into the into the school system and provide a good education. And I think all of this scrambling we've been doing for the last six weeks has really kind of put strain on our operations. Our administration I know is dead. Um, I'm dead just reading the emails of all the different things that we've got to do to react and, and trace. And, and as much as I hate being in a remote learning environment because I don't think it's the best environment. I think we've got to have good strategies to support the families, our teachers, and give the best education we can. And I know it's not going to make everybody happy, but that's the first priorities that I think I'm interested in. And that's kind of where I am right now. Mm -hmm. I, I, the other board no, I, I would uh, echo. I, go ahead. No, I just wanted to, I, I want to echo your comments. I think, um, and, and I just, echo first. You, you can echo them. <laughs> I'll take a second pass. But what, what I just, I just want to say a, a very special thanks to the principals and the administrators, because you're right, they, they are scrambling on a daily basis, covering classes themselves, um, you know, really trying to continue to keep the morale of staff up. Uh, they've just really done an extraordinary job. And now, because the numbers are rising in New Hampshire uh, so rapidly, uh, the DHHS is stretched to the max. They've said that they're not going to do contact tracing for um, between, uh, they'll, they'll do it for 18 and under uh, or 65 and older. So there's this whole group uh, that they are not going to do contact tracing for, which does expose us and, and does put us at risk because um, that means if there's an adult uh, that needs to be contact traced in the school, it's really left on us to do. So that's an additional, um, you know, a challenge and stressor uh, for us. And um, it's it's been really, hard for the principals, um, but they've done an amazing job keeping us open. And that was the goal, right? When we met in August, uh, we felt the numbers were low. This was the time for teachers to be in front of students, build relationships, build routines. And we've heard great things about the ability of teachers to pivot this year. The quality has been much better in terms of the remote learning. Teachers have really done a great job. And so if there was a time to you know, go remote, this probably is it. You made a really good point too that if we go remote some of the students at the upper levels will actually get more face-to-face -face education that was a pro yes yes and i think that that's what we need to focus on i think that at the end of the day it, it's it's a difficult decision to make um and i agree that given the statistics given the rising cases given the staff limitations and the extra stress on the principals and the families, it's it's the only decision really that seems to be the one that is going to allow us to continue to teach because it is disruptive. I had a high schooler that had to quarantine for two weeks because of a potential exposure at school. Then I had two other kids that were home for two weeks because their school shut down. And it's almost harder to get them back when they keep going back and forth. Um, so my only question would be, would there be, like, I know that we have the um, program where we would let some of the students that are receiving special services come into the district. Would there be any ability to let families facing hardships that simply don't have anyone to be home with their children or, or is that not 
anything that we could potentially look at. Can I? Yeah, please. Um, we did reach out to our insurance company about that, Holly. Um, we believe that Goffstown uh, had explored that earlier in the year. I am going to be reaching out to their BA. Um, our insurance company uh, has stated that just pending certain approvals and so forth, that it is a doable option for us to provide that here. We would just have to utilize um, some of our support staff um, in that capacity. I think that would make it a lot easier for me personally, um, knowing that all the all the kids will have an opportunity to continue. And you know, I agree with Mr. Carvel and Mr. Hannon, and I don't know what your thought is on. Well, obviously, I'm a little. <laughs> I am a remote teacher, and the lack. What you were saying about the quality of education, it's not missing. Remote teachers, if they're doing it right, are doing a spectacular job. And these kids are getting the education just as if they were in the classroom or better. And under the circumstances, they'd be getting more hours, yeah. more direct instruction. And, consistency too. and they, like I said, the consistency, yes, they would lose some of the social, but they would have the more... But they would lose that social anyways, the Christmas holidays and the break anywhere. So I think this is a safer option. I think it's less stressful for the teachers from my perspective. Uh, I also think that I, I think this time will give a, a good opportunity for everybody to reset, take a look at how to come back in a model uh, back to hybrid, uh, and at least have some planning and be proactive instead of reactive. And I think that uh, what I would like to see is I'd like to see those plans start getting worked on and not, we seem to always work on a plan on Monday for start and implement on Tuesday. This will give us a little bit of time for all the administration to come up with a plan, um, and at least, uh, socialize that uh, with our, with our teams and at least give the board an opportunity to review that and have a little bit more time than in front of the table, you know, making very hard decisions, but that's what we're here to do. And and as much as I, I do not like the remote model, I think the statistics, the numbers and the cases and, and, and you know, looking at the faces of a lot of the teachers out there, it's time to take a little bit here and then shift into this manner because as I put your numbers up to the plan, we're flirting with the lines of what the plan says to go to remote. Yes. Yeah. Well, technically, we, uh, technically yeah. we should be. Yeah, I think that, I think when we start altering that, that's what we planned. That's what we told everybody. That's what we do, and we need to execute. And I think yep. that's I think that's the better way to do. It, as much as I hate to do it, but you also uh, make a great point mm -hmm. to iron out the wrinkles. Yep. Before we come back to hybrid, look at what worked, and I would definitely get feedback from the teachers on that perspective in the individual buildings. Just because we started with that model doesn't mean that when we come back, you know, that we have to use the same one. I would say take take advantage of the opportunity to kind of regroup and yep. strengthen it. Yes. There, were, there were some real good pros, but there's definitely areas that we could improve on, I think. Agreed. The uh, leadership team um, has already uh, begun to make preliminary plans to start that process Excellent. of reviewing uh, the model for the start of second semester. So um, we definitely have some concrete steps that we're going to start taking over the next few weeks. Um, I guess I've got a change here. Right? Yeah, so like Mr. Carvel says, technically, you know, to the reopening plan, you know, we should be in remote. So just, you know, from a, to qualify that. And this, this is really before we start seeing these new, you know, new spikes, you know, this was probably even two, you know, two weeks ago, you know, mm -hmm. um, or close to it anyway, you know, so, um, you know, if we stick to the reopening plan, you know, to, you know, even what Mr. Carbell was saying, I totally agree. Um, you know, I hope, you know, that we can come back, you know, whatever we decide here today is coming back, really taking a deep dive, in, you know, into the hybrid model, you know, what is the best, you know, for the students and making sure we come out with a plan far in advance, you know, before executing it, you know, because I think that that'll reduce the strain on our teachers, that'll re reduce the strain on our families, and most of all, our students knowing what they're going to be able to jump into uh, when we do come back. Uh, and I think we definitely owe it to them for that. I mean, even trying to make a decision, you know, I don't know what the date is today, but just before Thanksgiving, 
I know it's going to be a huge strain in, in itself, but I think it's going to be hopefully welcomed. You know, I'm not in favor of remote. You know, you can talk to my wife about that. We go back and forth, you know, every day um, on that piece. And I could definitely sympathize with the, the families out there because you know, we are one of those families, you know, that are tied and really need to have our kids in school. Uh, but understanding all everything that you, you know you went over today, and I really appreciate it because I think it does put a lot of things into light. And uh, uh, and for us, and you know everybody that's uh, listening today to be uh, tonight to listen to, I, th I, I want to thank you. It was well prepared and uh, uh, gave us a lot to think about. So thank you to you and your staff for uh, presenting that uh, you know this evening at our meeting. So You're thank welcome. you. Uh, is there any other? Oh, Joe. I just got a question with the remote teachers and stuff like that. If they're in the buildings and we have snow days, snow, snow issues, are they going to have the computers at home so they can, if they have delayed and they can still teach, are they going to have the computers at their house so that they can still do their instruction? Yeah, but we are going to uh, be working with the teachers that they can prepare, that they, they will be taking their, you know, um, materials. You know, and and I'm going to be keeping close watch over the snow, okay. um, and oh, making gonna be none. no snow. But um, definitely, we're going we're going to um, try to make sure that everyone has what they need and can transition um, easily, regardless of the weather. Mr. Kerbo, thank you. Um, I will, even though the board says not direct operations, but I would recommend, and maybe my colleagues would also recommend that that the first snow day where we have a snow day take a snow day, you yeah. don't do remote learning, let the kids enjoy the first day of snow, let the teachers take a break, <laughs> do a snow day, stop the pressure, take a break. All right. That's the other option is, I'm sorry. Nothing Lisa. better than getting a phone call saying it's a snow day. Don't All right, it's me. a snow day. Well, the first snow here, day. here. Uh, the <laughs> teachers have talked break. about that and teachers really would like to see snow days, snow days. Teachers like them too. Yeah, I yeah. think for a foreseeable yeah, future, I think snow days are kids snow days. Loves a It's just my opinion. I'm just mandating the first one I'd like. I to would just say for, for the foreseeable take future. Take a break. Well, the good news about that, too, is <laughs> in the, the summer, snow. this will hopefully be under control. So if there are days that need to be made up, you know, maybe we'll be in full live in school at that point. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, by June. Well, I'm sure we can think of Sounds like it. When the time comes. All right. Seriously, I'm making a note. First snow day. <laughs> It's a Sunday. At least. Sunday. At least. I, love, so, I love that phone call. So if I hear you all correctly, uh, you support going uh, to remote learning from the uh, post Thanksgiving break to Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. and we will return uh, right after Martin Luther King. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then we will send a notice out to families tomorrow. Oh, uh, I believe that the board supports uh, the administration's recommendation to go remote uh, from the post Thanksgiving time period to uh, Martin Luther King. And we will send a notification home to families and I will have the principals uh, begin preparing for that remote transition with teachers um, on Wednesday. On Wednesday? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Thank you all. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, anything else? On that, no. Okay. So we'll move to old business budget overview for 21 22. All right. So before I turn this over to Ms., uh, Mrs. Fortson, uh, just everyone should have received their budget books this year. Yes. Um, I love it. Excellent. Good. I'm so glad. But uh, trivia question for the board. No. All right. Come on, Mr. Hannon. Uh, I can see it. You know. I see it. All right. So the front cover this year, um, what do you see? What do you see? Two people holding hands. Yay! Holly gets the prize Are you tonight. Me? <laughs> she got it. You saw that? I, oh, yeah. you that. I saw it. It's also an M. It. It's also an M for Milford. Mr. Hannon got it too. No, but... I did not. I didn't even come close <laughs> to getting oh, that. All right, it is two people holding hands. No, it's two people holding hands. But anyway, there you go. You know those genius games, Holly wins. Mm. All right. 
So this is the uh, 2020, or sorry, 21-22 uh, proposed budget. It will be online tomorrow morning um, on the district website, but uh, hard copies uh, are available today for the budget committee and for the board. Uh, all 302 pages for you to peruse uh, multiple years of data and information. Um, our budget meeting is going to be on Saturday. What time? Eight o'clock in the morning, we start. We will uh, order some breakfast and coffee uh, for the budget committee and members of the board. Have we decided where it's going to be? Yes, we have. <laughs> is the middle it is going to be in the high school cafeteria. High school, okay. Yes. Sorry, I had to remember. We went through multiple scenarios today. You sure it's high school? Yes, high school cafeteria. Uh, yes, right. high school right. cafeteria. All right. uh, 8 o'clock a.m. Uh, we'll have some breakfast, like I said, about 7.30. And uh, we look forward to presenting to you as teams and departments um, on all of the budget highlights and program improvements. And I'm just going to give it over to Jane to just give you a bit of a highlight uh, and walk you through the warrant article discussion again. Okay. Um, <clears throat> as far as old business, it's really new business because it's 2122 and we're not there yet. So um, as you go through, we kind of um, put in the front section, the superintendent's message, which is kind of the overview of what's to come. Um, I know there's a lot of information. There are a lot of graphs. There's a lot of tables. Uh, I believe there are more than there were last year, believe it or not, as far as tables and graphs. Um, but Dr. Heisinger, um has outlined in her message that begins um, on page 16 and goes for several pages uh, what, um, what we focused on, what the district strategy was, what the budget that's being presented, the, the dollar amount, the percentage increase, uh, what areas were impacted, how it's affecting um, culture, student success, community engagement, um, following policy, communication. Um, so there's a lot of highlights. And then for those that really want to dig in after that, we go into great detail. Um, you'll see uh, financial graphs. You're going to see enrollment graphs. You'll see uh, each of the principals have um, put forth their, their budgets within their schools, spoken about the school, their school accomplishments and how uh, moving the budget forward with these program improvements um, will keep them on track to uh, get where we want the district to be and continue to be. Um, as you head to the back of the book, you'll see uh, the actual budget laid out. Um, it's got three years of actual history, our adopted budget for the current year, and then the proposed budget all laid out. So it gives you a historical perspective. <clears throat> and we also have in the, the back included the uh, wage um, pages as we have in, in the past. Yep. Did it? That's yeah. That's it's beautiful. <laughs> Look, a lot of a uh, <clears throat> lot of work, you know, into this. I know when I was on the budget committee, and you know, Ron could definitely, uh, uh, you know, we didn't get this type of information, you know, and just from the board up to the last, you know, this is even better than last year. I think when I was leaving. Yeah the office getting this, picking this up, you know, it's, this is great, you know, uh, <clears throat> just the way it's laid out, it's, you know, it's laid out as a spreadsheet too. So when you're taking a look at it, when you're looking at the, 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 the like the PL type uh, piece, it's laid out from page, you know, left to right. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to read. So you don't have to be going down. So well done. And I would just say that, you know, definitely, you know, for anybody who hasn't been through this session on Saturday, you really got to take a deep dive on this, uh, you know, as far as being prepared, write down your questions that you have, because you will forget, because there's a lot of people in the room and a lot of information is coming your way. So write down the questions that you have, you know, prior, uh, so you can get them answered, you know, and or that we can come back and get some uh, uh, more answers. And if we've heard a budget committee, I, I think I believe that they have a um, meeting on Wednesday, <clears throat> which will be virtual. Uh, so hopefully they pick up their 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 binders if they haven't already. It's in the SAU. They uh, have. Ready for, they have? Yep, all of them. Well, I, I know I saw the piles. It was beautiful. I, I took the bottom one because I hate when people look, you know, read them. But anyway, uh, come pick them up. If they have any questions, they're going to love this. Um, 
as far as the information is there, they need to really go through it. Um, and I would also, you know, just to challenge everybody, you know, as we're looking at the budget, you know, building the budget and, you know, trying to come to an agreement that, you know, I really want the budget committee to, you know, get with us, ask us questions if they have any, to get some clarity, not just Saturday, you know, even leading up to it and, uh, and afterwards so we can come to, uh, uh, a good mutual agreement on you know what's best for the district because we're you know we're going to be looking at things not just for this year but years out we have the feasibility study that was done and i know the superintendent and uh, staff have done a great job of you know looking at what the future is going to be for the district also in our buildings and we have to be prepared uh you know for those you know type of financial uh <laughs> Uh, pieces are, are going to be coming our way that's going to benefit our district. Um, so we really need to look at, you know, I hate when people say, yeah, we're going to make cut, 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 cut. And it, it, it doesn't really make sense for the district. You know, it's easy to say cut, you know, but it doesn't make, if, they, if that doesn't make sense for the district's future, it doesn't, you know, we shouldn't be looking at it that way. Well, it's so really look at the spinder, eyes wide open. Um, you know, what's going to be the best for not just next year, but five years, you know, down. We, that's the way you really need to look uh, when you're setting up a budget and reviewing it. And I know Jane and the administrative staff with uh, Jessica have done a really nice job, you know, doing that. And um, so thank you very much. You know, I know a lot of work. And this is uh, this is when we start telling Jane in January, okay, time to start getting your vacation uh, <laughs> in order because the light gets uh, stayed on till midnight. So between deliberative session and the vote is my break. Thank you very much, <laughs> and I'm going to hold you to that. Uh, so I know the rest of the board will. So thank you uh, for all that, and uh, you know, thank you to uh, you know all the teachers, and administration, and our families. You know, if anybody has questions, these are the time to ask these questions. Uh, we're we all we're all uh, shareholders uh, in the success of you know our students and uh, our buildings and our staff and uh, please ask the questions whatever we can do we hate the uh, you know the, the Monday morning quarterback after a decision's made come forward you know now that's what it's all about it's open and uh, to ask the questions it's the best time to do it now. All right, I love this. All right, we'll open up to public comment. Uh, again, I'll remind uh, everybody. We got one. Oh, Warner. No, I thought you already talked about the Warner. Oh, oh it was, you were so stimulated. Just... <laughs> um, I had uh, presented the board with four warrant articles um, last, how long ago was it? Tuesday, Wednesday last week? Yep. Um, on that, um, you will see there's the operating budget warrant article. Uh, we have a warrant article um, for the MESA uh, contract. We have a warrant article to add to the special ed expendable trust and to raise those funds from uh, end of year um, surplus or, or fund balance so that there is no tax impact. And we have a warrant article for the facilities uh, expendable trust that was set up last year to bring it back up to the 400,000 that we set for it this year. And that one is to raise and appropriate from taxation. All of those are up to the board to look at, you, you, other than the operating budget um, and, and the massive contract you can add, you can take away. Um, I had initially put one on there to have a retained uh, fund balance at year end up to the 5%. I did take that off just to, you know, make things a little simpler, but all of these things are there for the board's consideration or to tailor a warrant article that, you know, maybe you wanna put a fuel expendable trust. Um, but for what we have recommended, the four that we present to you are, are what the administration has put together. But again, these, these are at the option of the board and uh, you would want all of your Warrant articles to be um, in order and presented for the second Tuesday in January. That's the last date that any warrant articles can be presented. Okay. Does anybody, any board member have a question? I know it's been in front of you for a couple of weeks. I do. Mr. Carvel? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a couple things that I think the, it's tough for um, me at this point, just getting the budget today. Right. 
to determine this when we, when we have language about taking from the fund balance and we have revenues we're down revenues um it's hard to say that you know we may have some to put in here and i and there are some of these funds like the special education fund i worry about taking that from from the fund balance because if there is no fund balance we're not supporting this piece right. um and some of the drives to the total to the the total a board limited uh, amount of the 2.8. I noticed in the budget already that we're under that. And mm -hmm. so I would just say that I think that the special ed one um, should not be taken from fund balance. That should be raised. That is a very important Warren article in yep. my eyes is uh, it's something that, you know, crushes districts when we have out of, out of district placements. Um, and I just think that that's something that we should consider. I haven't seen the, the budget revenue sheets yet to determine that. Um, but I would say that what I was looking at in the figures, um, you know, with the trusts of the maintenance being more like, I know that we said 400,000 is where we want it to be, but if there's an opportunity from the fund balance being having the ability to put more into that fund um, for future use and for our facilities and heating plants and all that. So I think that the, the language can be adjusted to be the minimum of that, you know, of that amount from fund balance, but give us the ability to put more money in there. Um, but I think the way that I just initially looked at the budget is the revenues that we've had from the new 400,000 plus that's come in. I think that that spending on some of the budgetary items that we could shift that and then we could have this budget still be well within the limits of 2.8 fund both of these significantly and still be under our target number with them with you know hopes of a MESA contract as well but mm -hmm. I just don't want to strap ourselves to without seeing those revenue sheets and without seeing that you know that projections which we don't know where we're going to be with projections i mean it's just it's very hard to determine but i i just worry about that not having funded the right way mm -hmm. Good point. Just my and, thoughts. and we wanted you to have the option mm -hmm. uh the reason we structured it that way the reason we did come in below uh significantly below what the board had given us the bandwidth for is we wanted you to have some wiggle room to be able to make some of those determinations um we also have some things that uh we as a leadership team uh said that you know if necessary we would do without but there's still priorities for us to continue to improve um so we have those to share with you on Saturday. Saturday. Um, so there is some discussion, but we wanted to also be mindful of, you know, the taxpayers and um, the burden that, you know, the, uh, you know, taxes have put on them, this pandemic has put on them, the economic situation that we currently face. Um, so it should lead to a lively discussion, I know, with the budget committee um, on Wednesday and on Saturday collectively together uh, to be able to come up with a number that uh, is comfortable uh, for everyone and still moves us forward towards our strategic plan. Mm -hmm. Well, sir, we passed the pop -up. Any other questions? <laughs> Now, can I move on? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll move on to uh, public comment. This is a reminder. Um, please keep it to our agenda items and much appreciate it. <laughs> what do I do with the water? Hi, Augusta Still Wagon, 16 Boulder Drive. In Good evening. Time. Just a quick question. Has the have you put any thought into having the entire district go remote after Christmas for the two weeks for people that are traveling? So it's even in the programs that we're all going in for, which I think is fantastic. But people are going to travel during those times. So if there is SPED or DD or Project Drive, if any of those families, I mean, if me as an employee is very nervous about having people come back from vacation and not saying they travel. So I just want to know, was there any consideration about moving the whole district just to be safe from after Christmas for those two weeks till MLK? So we all could not have to worry about that. Just a comment. Thank you. Thank you. Good comment. Uh, on Zoom, uh... Mr. St. Jean. 
Good evening, board. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Great. Uh, Jason St. Jean, 11 Deerwood Drive here in Milford. Uh, Mr. Chairman, board, Dr. Heizenga, good evening. Uh, just wanted to comment on a couple of things that uh, were brought up tonight. Uh, number one uh, being um, Jenner Doty's comment about the music program, uh, whether it be chorus or um, music. Um, is there a way that, and I understand you have a difficult job, you're, you need to make a decision for, um, for the entire town, and I do not envy you for doing that. Um, however, can we, is there a way that we can leave it up to the chorus and or music teachers themselves and the parents of the students and the students themselves, whether or not they want to continue with the in-person instruction for chorus and for music, utilizing the gymnasiums, utilizing the, um, the cafeteria, utilizing outdoors if it's possible. I know it's New England, so maybe as we get into December or January, it might not be possible, but is there a way to at least entertain in-person instruction if the students are able to get their own transportation to the school, I'd like us to at least entertain that, that possibility without summarily dismissing it because of transportation. I understand that all of the students wouldn't be able to do it, but we should at least entertain the possibility of having some, if not the majority of students be able to still take part in in-person instruction when it comes to chorus and uh, and music. So that was number one. Uh, and number two, in regards to the uh, uh, full remote, um, as, a, as a parent who stays home to work since March, um, I'm trying my best to be a fifth grade and freshman uh, teacher uh, and failing miserably. I just thank God my kids are smarter than I am, so it works out. Um, but in regards to sports um, for, for high school, like swim team and any other winter sports, uh, I didn't hear tonight uh, that that was going to be discussed. Uh, Milford Keys swim team was able to pull off swim team this summer. Uh, it was it was um, truncated, but they were able to pull off swim team this summer. Um, have winter sports been addressed with this remote learning? Um, a final decision hasn't been made on winter sports yet. Um, I'm okay. waiting feedback from the athletic director, um, and we had a meeting already and discussed uh, some options. Um, I do anticipate a decision in the next week and a half to two weeks. Very good. Okay. Th thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Carvel, uh, I think we should take a vote on the first snow day being absent for uh, the entire district. I completely agree with that. <laughs> thank you. Dr. Huzanga, can I just a a follow up to his question? When I asked earlier about the probability of being able to just bust them in during if we had stayed in session, I understand that it couldn't have worked, but if we're going full remote from that point on, could we, we're paying for the buses anyways. Could we potentially reappropriate a couple of the buses <clears throat> for the, the students and programs that really need to be on site if the teachers are willing to be on site during that time frame? Maybe a personal, you know, discussion, because it sounds like the kids in that program and at least, you know, Mr. Doty, I don't know of any of the ATC or CTE teachers would also want to look into that, but we're paying for the buses anyways. And if no one's here, spacing shouldn't be an issue. If we could at least look into that, that would be look into it. Excellent. Okay. Uh, I'll take two more callers. Um, Ms. Smith. Two more callers, like I'm doing a radio show. Thank you. Um, Susan Smith, 136 Annan Drive, Milford. How are you tonight? Uh, I, I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, I just wanted to comment on the full remote versus hybrid. Um, I have one kid in each scenario, and my their experience has been that while remote was a bit of an adjustment the first couple of weeks of school, especially getting used to Zoom classes, which my son wasn't that comfortable with at first. Um, that has gone really well. The teachers are doing a great job. He's doing well, um, work's getting done, and he's getting an education four days a week. Our experience with hybrid, however, with the high school hasn't gone as well in part because um, my son has an AP class and the workload to do an AP class and do well in it cannot get covered in two days a week. And so 
luckily he's learning how to create study groups and try to do some things on his own time to figure out what he's having trouble with. Um, but I think my sense of it is it's very stressful for the teacher um, and very stressful for the kids, many of whom are not doing very well. So I know you, some of you have some concerns about full remote that I think, you know, as far as the experience that we've had, um, I'm not sure that the concerns are necessarily greater than the, the concerns about the amount of education the hybrid kids are getting. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, go to... Uh... Nadine. Hi, good evening. Nadine DeRozier, Noons Corey Road. How is everyone? Good, how are you? Fine, thank you. I just had two questions. First, I was hoping um, maybe Dr. Heisinga, if you could clarify the Wednesday expectation for the remote um, schedule going forward. Currently, we have, um, you know, AM comes one week and then we alternate with PM. Was that still the expectation? I was unclear on the slides that you shared, or would we be moving to more of like um, office hours with our kiddos on that day? So my my um, discussion with the admin team was that uh, that day would be for, uh, it would be a win Wednesday, it would be office hours, it would be um, time for students who uh, need additional help, uh, small groups to come into the buildings and actually work with the teachers. Okay, so thank you. Four days of live instruction, then the Wednesday would be in school help and um, office hours. Okay, Can I thank you. One question too, so for the elementary, would it be still A and B or will they be all combined now? And They're gonna a, be combined. They'll have so a they're... full day. Oh, that's great. That's. So we would all all of the children A and B would be combined at one one time period. I'm just trying to understand. Yes. Okay. And also for um, the high school, for again, as Mrs. Smith was saying about AP, I have a son currently in AP biology, and I was just curious on how the labs would move forward in that regard. Right now, the labs are during his hybrid days. Um, do we have any idea of what those would look like moving forward to complete the labs in an IP format? AP format, excuse me. I would have to defer that to the high school principal. And um, I know she'll be sending out specific, specific information. information. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. And we'll take uh, one last uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom call, uh, Ms. Tricia Shea. Ms. Shea. Oh, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> Trisha Shea, 235 Stable Road. I have a question about um, the consideration for the kids coming in um, for music and the busing. Would they come in for the full day um, and do their remote day from school? My question, I ask that because if we're talking about busing and you're looking at block schedule or even the schedule um, that the middle school has, how will they have time to get back um, in time to log on for their next block Good question so, so those those are things that i think you have to consider as well if they're if they're going to school are they staying there the whole day and doing their remote because how are they going to get home in time to be on time for um right. their other four classes so i just think that's something that we have to take into consideration as well thank you John has a great suggestion uh, would that be wednesdays then <laughs> if it could be that's yeah. possible Yep, we can explore that. Then it wouldn't, it wouldn't impact any of the other learning. Mm -hmm. All right, and so we'll close up um, public comment. And I thank everybody for their input. Um, and just to kind of uh, recap, you know, some of those, because I know the questions will come up. Uh, as far as winter sports, it's more to come, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, but to keep everybody in consideration. It's not just our decision, it's also teams and other schools that are gonna be putting teams together too. So it's not just a decision that we make for you know our other kids, it's all the other schools that are part of that decision-making too. And we'll get, have that in two weeks, along with you know the music programs and uh, 
uh, any extracurricular activities that we may have. So those aren't shut down. Mm -hmm. Those are still being reviewed, correct? Reviewed, yeah. All right, so I just wanna make sure that uh, everybody else, we, we understand that uh, clearly. So great, and that's, that's very good news, all right? Um, anything else from the board? I know this was a lot of information. No good. All right. So I have a motion so, to adjourn. So moved. Motion made by Mr. Carbell. Second. By Mr. Vitulli. All in favor? Aye. Four zero. We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending this evening.